Hi guys, James at Bespoke Airsoft back here with you with another video. And in this video, we're looking at the Umerix Legends CO2 Cowboy Rifle in black finish. So yes, I haven't been on camera for a while, I've been slacking, but we're doing a lot of website stuff, uh, getting all your orders out to you as well of course, so thank you very much for keeping us busy guys. But in this video we're looking at the Umerex Legends Cowboy Rifle, which is CO2 powered. Um, it does state that these things come in about two joules out of the box, and I didn't experience that, but we'll get into that a little bit later on. It's powered by two CO2 capsules, which are built into the stock here, if we just rotate this off. Um, in the end cap for the stop there, you've got a tool for putting the CO2 capsules in and out. Just a push button and a twist there. We've got some fake, I think it is fake wood, I don't think it's real wood at all. It looks far too clean and there's a seam line, so yes, it is plastic. Now this is a shell ejecting semi-automatic rifle from Umerex. And what you do, it's very much like the... Uh, shell ejecting, or say shell ejecting, the revolvers that take the rounds, not shell ejecting because it's a revolver. Um, and you basically fill one of these up with a BB in the front there, or in the back, I can't quite remember, I think it's in the back of these shells, yeah, in the back. So you push a BB into the back, and then each shell you load into the side of the rifle like so. You get 10 shells in the box with this rifle. Um, so you just pop them in the side there, and then as you pull the action, you get a round loaded up into the chamber there, loads it in, obviously this is all empty, we do have a bit of CO2 in there because the CO2 seems to just last forever in this thing. You fire it, the BB will come out, and then as you go to load another round, it ejects the shell, loads the next one up, so that's pretty cool. Right, I'm just struggling to hold these shells in my left hand here to make this easy for you guys to see, but you have 10 shells, they're pushed into the side of the action like so, which are fed into the lower tube that you see just under the barrel, which is your magazine. So we just load these in. When you first get these out of the box, it is a little bit difficult to do. Um, I did struggle pushing them in. I caught my thumb on it a few times. Uh, it doesn't help if you've got a, a long nail on your thumb at all. It just seems to catch it as you pull your thumb out. But there you go, simple as that, nice and quick and easy. It doesn't take a lot. I mean, if you're running one of these, perhaps you're doing some sort of Wild West style games. I'm not too sure which one would be a little bit different. You know, perhaps something on the stock there, one of those belts that holds the shell is going to make it far easier for you because it's not like a revolver where you've got like the ability to have a speed loader. Um, so it's just gone really dark here for some reason. I don't know why. Just a bit of extra light there, just in case. So once the turn shells around uh, loaded in, obviously the chamber is empty, so we. Obviously, there's nothing we can fire. We can manually cock the hammer and fire the, uh, the rifle, like so. And you'll notice there that I can't actually pull the trigger. And there is a safety built in to the handle here. It's just a little tiny button. And when you've uh, got the gun properly held, it obviously depresses that button and allows you to fire. But without your hand through that loop, just pushing down that little switch there. I say switch, it's more like a pressure, pressure pad. Um, it won't fire. We grab it like normal and it will fire. So nice and easy. Doesn't matter whether you've got one round loaded or ten rounds loaded, it always loads just as easy as the next one. Obviously, the quicker that you do the action, the more uh, sort of throw you're going to have on the rounds. I'll demonstrate this here. So, see that one just went further. If I do it slowly, it doesn't, doesn't give it as much of a throw on the round. So, if you're going through, using 10 rounds, they always seem to come out in a really random configuration, whether they're left or right. But yeah, absolutely heaps of fun. I've had loads of fun with this thing when firing it on the 15 meter range test through the chrono. The chrono was a bit different because I was trying to focus on uh, getting the rounds through nice and easy. And obviously loading this thing, they were just shooting everywhere in the garage and I was trying to do it in a way where I could like tip the gun upside down and just load it that way and then I was able to unload the shells in a safe area just while I was focusing on the chrono. 
it would be nice, like the A and K, the old gas A and K ones, to not have the shell jets in there for skirmish games because they're just going to be flinging everywhere. Would I personally use this in a game? No, because these shells, which are all on the floor here, are going to be an absolute pain to pick up and find. Doing more sort of, I say milsim, but more sort of battle sim or um, LARPing events while West stuff, this is going to be absolutely perfect. Or if you just want to have some fun with your kids uh, in the back garden or you want to have some fun yourself and just have a bit of extra realism, um, loading the rounds in and out, you know, it's as real as it gets. And you'll never get bored of loading this thing or firing this thing. So, however, let's get through onto the, say, top down camera, the up close camera, I'll call it now. We'll get to the up close camera, we'll take a closer look at this thing, um, and then we'll get to the chrono and range test and then my final thoughts. And here we have it. It's going to be another difficult one to, uh, to get on the camera because it's so long. But as you can see there, nicely finished. These obviously come in three finishes. You do black, silver or gold. The shells here as well. So these are the shells. You've got a little tiny rubber gasket there at the back which holds the BB in place and the rest is just a straight port through the shell there. It's obviously got 10 of these and these are simply loaded into the side of the action here just by pressing down on this, this little ramp section. So what you do is you just put a little bit of pressure like that. I have seen other people say that it's easier um, to load these things with one half loaded like that and then just pushing through on that. That might be easier to do, but I would not do that just because you're pushing on the back of these rubber seals here at an angle when they go in. It's much easier that I've found just to press them in with your, thing, your finger or your thumb. It's nice and easy to do. Once you've done this about six or seven times, it does get a hell of a lot easier. And then as you'll see here, I'll try to do my best to get this on camera for you. It loads the shell in, lines it up with the barrel there. To apologize if this is out of focus. And then by pulling the hammer, the handle back, loads the round in. And then as you do it, it's just at that last step, it'll kick the shell out, load the next one. Like so. So you've got the back of the stock here. So you need to, you can use a tool like a, a coin or a flathead screwdriver, but you don't really don't need to, just push and twist with your thumb and then this will just come off. And then you've got your housing there which houses the two CO2 bulbs. They go uh, back to back, so both have the nozzle pointing outwards. So one nozzle points towards the gun, one nozzle points towards the stock, and obviously pierces them both. Like so. You've got a lovely fake wood finish. You've got a safety over here, which is extremely hard to push. Um, <laughs> when using this thing, um, I just ended up just giving up on the safety just because it is very, very tough. Sometimes it would go in, sometimes it wouldn't. Let's just fire that there. So, seems like it has to be not cocked at all for the safety, but it is very stiff. Get you a close up here of the loading chamber. Then you've got your rear sight, which can be adjusted by pushing forwards and backwards, which sort of pushes up this sort of leaf spring style sight here. And then you've got just a brass or a gold colored dot sight there, which is your peep sight on the front. See there's nothing to bring apart at the front, there is a screw there obviously for something of disassembly. But apart from that, your fake wood hand grip here, it's very comfortable and to use. It's not heavy at all um, and then you will see just on the side there the two dual max. So 
serial number on the barrel there. Very nicely put together. Great for the collectors out there. So let's get this thing chronoed and let's shoot it at the target 15 meters. Let's see how it does. Of course, as always, for the chrono test, we're using 0.2 gram BBs, uh, which is Aries branded BBs. And then for the uh, accuracy test of 50 meters, we're using 0.3 gram Aries BBs. And we'll see how this thing does. So I kind of had the iron sights in this direction. Um, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. A couple of flyers. That could have been me. I, I know that one was definitely not me. Um, this one could have been. Um, it did seem to pick up velocity though, so let's re chrono it for a third time.
So you can see they're actually chronoed quite low compared to what they're saying. They're saying about two joules. I've seen reviews on this where they're doing about 500 and upwards. But I just could not get it to shoot that hard. Um, the more I shot it, the more it rose up just slightly. As I don't know if I'm sure if I've got it on camera, but if, you, if I have, I'll, I'll have included it. Um, so the more rounds I put through it, it did gradually creep up, but it got to the highest of about 350-ish. Um, so nowhere near that two jewel two mark that they're on about. So what I want to do, I want to get rid of the CO2 in this, and I want to see if the system that it uses actually pierced both CO2 capsules. If it has pierced both CO2 capsules and it's doing about 350, then I think maybe something might be wrong with it. If it's only pierced the one, what that does mean is if you're piercing the two capsules, it's doing two joules. If you did just want to pop in uh, an empty capsule and a full capsule, that means you could probably reduce the power. But we'll drain the CO2 of this thing uh, and we'll take a look at what's going on. So, I've drained the remaining CO2 from this rifle and remove the capsules and they are both perfectly pierced so it was at full pressure the whole time. What does this mean? It could mean that that two joule max that they're talking about is a max and it's not a guaranteed two joules. It could also mean that this one just for some reason is shooting lower than the others. I really don't know so this could be seen as a good or a bad point um, but for the, for the lack of not knowing perhaps a bad point um, but this is absolutely heaps uh, to, of fun to shoot. I've had an absolute blast with this rifle. The shells, you know, if you shoot in an area where they're easy to find, great. You know, you're going to have an absolute fun time. Um, just come with 10 in the box. So, yeah, I'm uh, delightfully impressed with this thing for what it is. Is it skirmish ready? No, I don't really think it is. Is it good for LARPers that do the Wild West style games? Because I know that, that is a thing in the UK and uh, maybe elsewhere. Yes, this will be an absolute perfect piece. This is the black one, which is the cheapest. The silver and gold obviously get more expensive, but they're not cheap guns at all to own, but are great for the collectors out there. So thanks for tuning in for this quick review of the Umarex Legends Cowboy Rifle. Uh, I've had an absolute blast shooting it, like I've said, and we've got some cool stuff coming up, including the Action Army AAPO-1. We've got some stuff from APS. We've been sent some EMG stuff. Um, so we'll see how we get on. I'll try and get these videos out as quick as possible as I can for you. Thanks for staying tuned to Bespoke Airsoft and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.